and this life there's peace and this life is a sense that nothing in this world can take me down because I got overcoming in this life. It's overcoming life. It's the God kind of life. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. And it says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God. All right. I love what I heard Brother Copeland say not too long ago. And he said, there is victory in the new birth. Amen. All right, let's try that again. There's victory in the new birth. Amen. That means the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you don't have to wait 10 years for victory. There's victory right there in the new birth. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Other translations say, anyone who has been refathered by God. Come on now, how many glad you got refathered? In other words, come on, you got to know who your daddy is, right? I've been refathered by God. Then find out what runs in your family. So you've been born of God, refathered by God, but other translations say anyone who has received the new life from God overcomes the world. So you got overcoming, overcoming life, and you've got overcoming in your new nature. You overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. In other words, this life is activated by your faith. Woo! I've been born again. Come on, born of God. I've been refathered by God. Amen. My new identity is in Christ. Refathered by God. I have received the new life from God. Now notice 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. You know this verse. It says, fight. Amen. If you don't like to fight, you're not going to enjoy the benefits. But it's a certain kind of fight. Fight the good fight of, of faith. And then what's it say? Lay hold on eternal life. In other words, your faith accesses this kind of life and brings it into application. And then he says, and you have professed a good profession among many witnesses. In other words, the fight of faith is a fight that you win, right? And it, it, it contains a good confession, right? And it's got eternal life in it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, if you just knew what you got in you right now, let's try it again. I said, if you just knew what you got in you right now, and you made a bold confession about it, and you taught your children what it is, amen? amen. All right, now let me read you a couple of definitions here of what this life is. Woo! Man, I'm telling you, just the introduction to this message is making me happy. <laughs> Are you ready? Amen. All right, so let me give you Romans 8, 2 real quickly here. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, the law of the spirit of life, and there's different ways. One translation amplifies says the law of our new being has made me free from the law of sin and death. Um, but when you're talking about the spiritual law, 
He said, it is the law that operates in spiritual life. It is the law of the spirit of life. It is spiritual life, which is the life of God. And that life is spiritual life. Same thing that's in God. And there's a law that operates. The kingdom of God operates by certain laws. And you see how it operates. And he tells you in Romans how the law of the spirit of life operates. He said, it's made me free from the law of sin and death. Go ahead and look free, right? <laughs> there's another law operating stronger than the law of sin and death. It's the law of this life that is in Christ. And now it's in you. Praise the Lord. Can I tell my staff, I think, if you know you got this life in you and you declare it, it's going to make you smarter. So I'm expecting some better results. It'll make you more productive. It'll even make you creative because it's the life of God. Amen. Increase your intellect. Never say you're a slow learner anymore. All right. Well, one of the verses in Romans 8, I think it's verse um, 13. He says, though your body's dead because of sin or, or mortal, your spirit is alive. Your spirit is alive because of righteousness. That's Romans uh, 8, 13, I think. Interesting verse, isn't it? He says, your body's mortal or one day your body's going to die. He said, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. In other words, the moment your righteousness was produced by the death of Christ, penalty paid in full, Jesus walked across a legal declaration that you have been declared righteous and gave you eternal life. Legally. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. So he says, your, your body's dead because him, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And verse 13 is where he says that you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. So you're not just dealing with yourself natural to natural. You've got this law of the spirit of life operating for you. So he says your spirit is alive. And one translation says your spirit is instinct with life. In other words, instinct is an inborn pattern of behavior. Instinct. Your spirit has an inborn life on the inside, an inborn pattern of behavior. Instinct would be something that you may think more of the, uh, like if you're left-handed or right-handed, something that's kind of an instinct. Or just if you look at the animal kingdom, if you're talking about different kinds of dogs, you know, I love uh, dogs, you know, my daughter, they got dogs. I keep my dog outside, but, you know. My mother used to have a poodle and you couldn't hardly sit down, you know. So, uh, we did just get two cats. I wouldn't have never believed in my whole life that I'd ever have any cats. Because you ever see the commercial on TV, you know, where they're trying to raise money, you know. And they play sad music, show you a dog, you know. Can you send $25 to help the dogs? And. You know, I kind of thought about it. I thought, you know, I, I wouldn't mind helping a dog. And then I saw a picture of a cat, and I thought, no, I'm, that's out. I ain't helping. <laughs> I don't know if I could help a cat, but I could help a dog. Anyway, so <laughs> we got the cats because we have granddaughter, you know, two little cats, and they're, they stay outside, you know, and they're so cute right now. But when my dog gets loose, bam, they're up a tree. So Trina was laughing because she knows I don't care for cats. And one of my cats was up a tree. My dog, you know, he's German Shepherd. He's like, I'm going to have me some lunch right now. <laughs> so I had to get him away. And, and that cat's on the side of the tree like that. <laughs> so I said, come here, kitty, kitty. I, I got the cat, you know, and all the fangs are out, you know, and teeth and... <laughs> 
Hi, this is a new experience for me. I said, settle down. Scratch my arm. I'm starting to bleed. I said, I'm going to give you to the dog if you don't leave me alone. So Trina was laughing. I think she took a picture because I was saving a cat. She said, you have such compassion. All right, so. It's the life of God. So instinct, right? So different kinds of dogs over the years. Well, you, you know, I used to get a Labrador for years. Our kids are little best kind of dog. And then uh, a Labrador has an instinct. He's a retriever. And you got a pond or something, he heads right for the water. You say, where did he get that from? He, it's inborn. He needs to be trained, but you couldn't train him if he didn't have the instinct. In other words, you cannot train a poodle to do what that Labrador would do because he does not have the instinct. The reason God can train you is he gave you the life and you already have an inborn pattern of behavior. And now God says, come on, I can train you now. So the Labrador is a tremendous dog, but he still needs to be trained. But he can be trained because he has what? The life or the instinct particular to that, that particular Labrador. Amen. So the instinct would be in your spirit. And so everything that's in this life, all of the fruit of the spirit is in this life. It just has to be refined out. Amen. And so you say, I got the God kind of life, the divine instinct on the inside of me. So my first instinct is to be merciful, to walk in love. And in this life, there's joy. So I'm, I'm regularly a happy person. And this life, there's peace. And this life is a sense that nothing in this world can take me down because I got overcoming in this life. It's overcoming life. It's the God kind of life. Amen. All right, go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. And here's what you'll see exactly from Paul's letters that this life and being in Christ are synonymous. But God, Ephesians 2, 4, can you find that? Woo. Come on, this life is what? Spiritual substance, divine instinct. It's in your spirit. It's spiritual life. God has so much of it, right? The river in heaven is healing life. Come on. The woman at the well, what's her problem? Well, Jesus knew what her problem was. She had five husbands. And the man you're with right now is not your husband. She says, whoo. <laughs> Getting serious here right now. But Jesus said, if you'll drink from this life, the well of life, it will spring up on the inside of you to eternal life. What he's saying is that you'll never thirst again. In other words, this life, since it is the number one need of man, the crowning achievement of the plan of redemption, once this life comes into you, it's the first thing that happens that satisfies you. Come on, you don't have to go all around the world try to find yourself when you got the life of God on the inside of you. Come on, you don't have to have some big fancy house, some big fancy car to be satisfied. The moment you get the life of God on the inside of you, it will satisfy you. You'll never thirst again. Ha, ha, ha. God has billions of satisfied customers. When you receive this life, it satisfies the longing soul. In other words, you're not looking for somebody else to complete you. Right. And you can't be happy unless you have somebody else. When you have Jesus, you got this life. Yes. Yes. All right, you found Ephesians 2, 4. Let's finish reading this. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love. Well, this has to be love life, wouldn't it? You say, I have a great love life. 
because I got the life of God. But God, who's rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us even when we were dead. That's your problem. <laughs> he said, your problem is, is you're dead. <laughs> so we ain't going to be able to fix you. What do we need to do? He said, well, we're going to have to give you, here's God's plan. We were dead in sin, and he quickened. The word quickened means what? Made us alive. He made us alive. Look at this. Together with Christ, by grace you are saved. So he's calling this salvation made alive together with Christ. Come on, not just your sins forgiven. It is actually this life that saves you. Quicken, how many of you have an Amplified Bible? Amplified, they probably have it back there. They got everything going here. It's amazing. So, I haven't pulled up the Passion Translation. <laughs> they had it on the board. All right, here's the Amplified. Classic. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings, trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. So other translations say he gave us the very life of Christ himself and made us alive together with him. Well, what's this life going to do in you? Well, let's read the next verse. And raised us up together with him and made us sit down together given us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ. Now, this is really the first time I can remember laughing. Sometimes I'm preaching, I start laughing, and people are like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so they kind of like to mock you, go, ha, ha, ha. You know, a few smart aleck people, but I probably deserve it. I have a little of that myself. So <laughs> they go, ha, ha, ha. Wonder what he's laughing about. Some people think I'm laughing at them. <laughs> Not really. So, <laughs> why are you going ha ha ha? All right. For the first time I did the ha ha ha, I was about 17 years old, and me and another friend, we were Friday night meditating on who you are in Christ. And we came to Ephesians 2 4 through 6. He made us alive together. Gave us the same life that he gave to Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together with him. And that's the first time I saw it. I read it before, but that's the first time I saw it. And when I saw it, I went, huh. Come on, it's not just information now, it's revelation. And I saw myself made alive with the same life that God gave to Christ. Well, now I'm no longer fighting for victory. I'm fighting from victory. I'm no longer even level with the devil. I'm way up here. He's way down there. Ha <laughs> ha. One of our presidents said he did smoke marijuana. But he did not inhale. <laughs> now, what is that supposed to mean? He smoked marijuana, but he did not inhale. Like they're passing around a marijuana joint or something, and he just, like, keeps it in his mouth, and he'll... <laughs> you know, I didn't get the full benefit. You know, the person next to him, you know, they're like, inhale, and they're like... Ah. I said, that happens in church all the time. You see people sitting in church, they're going, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can tell they're not inhaling. They ain't inhaling. Come on, they got to go, praise the Lord. That's good. But somebody that gets a revelation, they go, glory to God. I've been made alive together with Christ. Raised up together with him. Ha, ha, ha. The devil. Makes 
conscious that you're more than a conqueror. So that's the first time I laughed. I went, ha, ha, ha. I was sitting there. They wanted to keep on reading the Bible. I said, hold it. I'm stuck right here for a minute. Come on, you don't need red, red wine to go to your head. You don't need Jack Daniels to go to your head. Make me forget that I should love you so. Neil Diamond. Red, red wine. I'm drowning out the memory. I've been hurt so bad. Well, red, red wine's just gonna make it worse. But if you got the life of God on the inside of you, you meditate on that life. Come on, in Him, in Christ is life. And that life is the light of men. And that life will go to your head, Manuel. Hallelujah. 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 So your confession and declaration, your faith, brings you into agreement with the word of life. Acts chapter 5, I think is verse 20, where it talks about uh, uh, when the apostles were in prison and uh, an angel came to get them out. And the angel said, I think it's Acts 5, 20. Check it out, Trent, will tell me if I'm right. But it says, uh, go, what did the angel tell the apostles? Go, stand in the temple, and speak all the words of this life. We ought to lay hands on your head right now. He says, that. in other words, they're coming out of prison, coming out of, and the angel says, here's your instruction. Where did he get it from? He came right from the presence of God. You go and stand in the temple and you speak the words of this life. Well, that angel must have been around when he saw Adam sin and that day he died. And that throughout the blood covenants, Come on, and coming to the cross and the blood of Jesus and the resurrection of Christ. And then when Jesus raised from the dead, come on, somebody wrote it this way and now work with this. He said, what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost. I mean, he's having trouble with one man with the life of God. And now he's got 120 that have the same life. Got the same spirit on the inside of them. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Many religions offer lessons, but only Jesus Christ came to give life. Eternal life is not something you get when you die and go to heaven. Eternal life is something that happens in your spirit when you are born again. Eternal life is the divine nature of God. It is a spiritual substance that is in God himself. And when we are born again, we receive that same life. The great news is, as believers, we have that same life in us right now. Overcoming life, joyful life, victorious life, supernatural life. In his brand new book, The God Kind of Life, Pastor Mark Hankins will show you everything that is available as a believer when you receive eternal life. Eternal life isn't just a place you will go someday. This God kind of life that's on the inside of you changes everything. In Christ, all things are new. You will also receive the four CD set on the God kind of life. In this teaching, you will learn what life is how to receive it, where it comes from, and what it does in us and what it will do forever. Here at Mark Hankins Ministries, 
We believe we are called to train and equip believers all over the world. This is why our vision is to translate our books into more than 100 languages. Your gift of any amount will not only help us translate books into many languages, together with our partners in Christ, we are spreading the message of faith around the world. Visit markhankins.org or call 318-767-2001 to get more information on how to order this special offer or how to partner with us to carry the message of faith around the world. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Hello, my name is Alicia Hankins Moran, and thank you so much for joining us for the program today where my parents talked about the God kind of life. Our offer this week is the book, The God Kind of Life. All religions give lessons, but only Jesus Christ gives life, eternal life. In this book, you will find out about that life and what it offers you and how to receive it and how to live it fully. If you would like it, you can go to markhankins.org or you can call the number on the screen. Thank you so much to all of you who partner with Mark Hankins Ministries. It is truly changing lives all over the world. You know, my parents' vision is to have every single book translated into a hundred different translations. So this gospel and this uh, word from God that the Lord has given them can go all over the world. And because of your generosity and your heart to be a part of Mark Hankins Ministries, we are able to do that. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We love you, we are praying for you, and we hope that you have a blessed day. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.